morning, everyone. You're joining us live for this One More Step Health Talk in conjunction with Techdom Penang's Virtual Glow Walk 2021. Welcome. We'll be starting our live broadcast in a bit. So before we start, I would like to announce a giveaway for our dear viewers who like, share, and comment during this live session. We will be giving away VIP e-tickets to 3D Penang Trick Art uh, Museum. So remember to like, share, and comment. We'll be giving away 20 tickets to 20 lucky viewers. So if you have any questions for our guest speaker later, you are most welcome to leave them in the comment section below. So we'll see you all shortly. Hello once again, especially to those who have just joined us. I am Tim from Techdom Penang, Penang's very own Science Discovery Center. Here's a fact we should all take to heart. Heart disease is one of the leading causes of death for both men and women. When it comes to heart health, there are lots of misconceptions and somehow dated info circulating around the internet. That is why we, need, we decided to catch up with our heart and vascular expert, Dr. Anamala Mutu, consultant cardiologist, interventional cardiologist, structural and GUCH interventionalist from Glen Eagles Hospital, Penang, to find out what you really need to know and to do to keep your heart healthy and your risk for disease at its lowest. So without further ado, please join me in welcome, uh, welcoming Dr. Anam to this morning self talk. Hello, morning, hi. Dr. Anam. Hi, good morning, team. Good morning, everyone. Hi. My name is Anam. Um, as Tim, Tim introduced myself, I'm one of the latest cardiologists at Glen Eagles Hospital. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about exercise and the heart, uh, how to be active and how to keep your heart healthy. Yeah, Tim? Thanks, Dr. Anam, for coming on this morning to share with us. Uh, so without uh, any delay, would you like to start your presentation? Yeah, let's do that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi. Thanks, Fatim. Yeah. So the topic for today is be active and keep your heart healthy. The next slide, please. All right. So we usually seek out personal trainers for many different reasons. Some do it to lose weight. Some do it to improve fitness for their sports. Some simply want to look good in their bikinis. Well, it is really important to remind ourselves the bigger picture of health and to reinforce why just fitness and exercise and walking is so important. Next slide. Okay, so how exercise helps our heart health? It helps by reducing our blood pressure. A healthy heart pushes out more blood with each beat, enabling it to function more efficiently. This, in return, decreases stress on the heart and your surrounding arteries, potentially reducing your blood pressure. If you have high blood pressure, exercise will help lower it. If you don't have high blood pressure, exercise help prevents it from rising with your age. And the lower your pressure, it reduces the risk of you getting coronary artery disease. Next slide, please. Exercise also have, helps lower your cholesterol. Many studies show that exercise is linked to a healthy improvements in cholesterol. It actually increases the amount of your healthy cholesterol, which is called HDL, and it lowers your bad cholesterol called LDL at least by 10%. The lower your cholesterol, the lower the risk for you to have coronary artery disease. The next slide, please. 
Okay, so it also improves your blood flow. Regular physical activity enables the heart to achieve improved blood flow in the small vessels around it, where blockages of fatty deposits can build over time. With better circulation in this area, you might prevent heart attacks. Evidence even shows that exercise can cause the body to create more physical connections between the small blood vessels, meaning the blood has more ways to travel where it needs to go. Next slide. Okay, walking and exercise decreases your risk for heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. Studies have shown that regular exercise helps reduce the risk of coronary heart disease as much as 21% for men and 29% for females, for women. It also helps in cardiac rehabilitation after one has had cardiac events. Additionally, active people have 20% less chance of getting stroke. Regular exercise and walking helps you keep your blood sugar levels in a healthy range, and in turn, it helps lower the risk for your pre-diabetes and helps with your diet. If you're diabetic, it also helps with your diabetic control. And when your diabetes is much better well controlled, it reduces the risk of you getting coronary heart disease. Next slide, please. Exercise helps you control your weight. Obese individuals require more blood to supply oxygen and nutrients to their bodies, which causes an increase in blood pressure, because our body will require more pressure to circulate the blood when we are bigger size. High blood pressure is a common cause of heart attack, as I've mentioned earlier, which is also more common in obese patients. So with walking, with exercising, you reduce your weight, you reduce your blood pressure, you reduce your risk of you getting heart attacks. Next slide, please. Exercise helps you build a strong immunity. Regular exercise can boost your immune system and help fight off infections. Exercise allows immune cells to perform effectively. It increases blood flow, decreases inflammation, and can strengthen your antibodies. Next slide, please. How about smoking? Every time you go and see a cardiologist, they'll probably nag you about smoking if you are smoking. They will insist that you stop smoking. Now, withdrawal symptoms and craving for cigarettes decrease during exercise and up to 50 minutes after exercising. Exercise decreases appetite and helps limit the weight gain for some people when they quit smoking. Yeah, And when you quit smoking, it reduces the risk for coronary artery disease. Next slide, please. Exercise helps reduce the incidence of heart arrhythmia called uh, namely atrial fibrillation, a common heart arrhythmia. The atrial fibrillation comes with a five-fold increased risk of stroke caused by blood clots. The Journal of American Medical Association, a strategy of weight loss, diet, and exercise resulted in lower rates of atrial fibrillation and less severe disease. The American Heart Association showed patients who exercise regularly with a short-term high-intensity interval training regimen, the, inc the incidence of AF was pretty much cut into half. Next slide, please. So basically, health, uh, basically exercising, walking, it promotes a lot of heart healthy habits, all right? American Heart Association promotes, uh, advocates that regular exercise helps you maintain a healthy weight. It helps you make better nutrition choices. You decrease your stress and it also improves your mood. Next slide, please. The question is, do I have to run? Um, unfortunately, I can't, I can't talk directly to my viewers currently. Um, I'm guilty of uh, saying that my favorite exercise is actually sleeping, but I am making baby steps to change it. I have advocate, I, I started a walk uh, in the last few months. Um, and uh, many whom I asked, do you have to, many will ask, do I have to run? Uh, because uh, I'm not going to run and I'm guilty of that. Uh, not even if my life depended on it. And there's definitely not going to be any running because I'm actually not, I, I, I myself am not a fan of running. Uh, so what should we do? Next slide, please. So there's no worries. Do any exercise that elevates your heart rate to your moderate intensity. For most adults, this pretty much means getting 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise like brisk walking or 75 minutes of high intensity exercise, like running each week, all right? So if you are not a fan of walking, brisk walking is highly advocated, and we are looking at 150 minutes a week. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so there are various ways to measure your exercise intensity to make sure your body is getting the most out of every workout. You may need to experiment to find out which method of measuring exercise intensity suits you best. There are three different measurement methods include. One is to calculate your target heart rate. The other one is to do a talk test. And the third one is to look at an exer exertion rating scale. Next slide, please. Okay, so measuring exercise intensity using your target heart rate. Now, the human body has a built-in system to measure its exercise intensity, which is the heart. Your heart rate will increase in proportion to the intensity of your exercise. You can track and guide your exercise intensity by calculating your target heart range. Now, for moderate intensity physical activity like brisk walking, a person's target heart rate should be around 64 to 70% of their maximum heart rate. Now, how do you calculate your maximum target heart rate? So basically, it's an estimate of a, the, the estimate of a person's uh, maximum heart rate is 220 minus your age. So let's look at this chart. If you are around 40, okay, so 220 minus 40, now about 64 to 76 percent will give you a heart rate of 108 to 126. Yeah. Now, if you are just starting to exercise, I would strongly advocate that you keep your heart rate at the lower end of your recommended range. All right. And then gradually increasing your intensity of your workouts as your fitness improves. Also, your heart rate should stay in lower ranges during the warm ups or cool down period. All right. Try uh, stretching before you do your brisk walking. Next slide, please. Now this is a uh, this slide is courtesy of my colleague uh, Sean, um, who was a who's a who's a runner. I, I, he I, I, when I started walking, um, uh, he uh, he told me about this talk test. Like you know, how do you see whether if your exercise is actually adequate enough or not? Okay, so the talk test is a simple and reliable way to measure intensity. Um, as a rule of thumb, you can if you can talk and sing without puffing at all, then you are exercising at a low level. If you can comfortably talk but not sing, then you're doing moderate intense activity. If you can't say more than a few words without gasping for a breath, then you're exercising at vigorous intensity. Here we are advocating moderate intensity activity, 150 minutes a week. Next slide, please. Okay, this might be a little small, but this is an exertion rating scale from level zero to level 10. Uh, okay, there's no exertion if you're minimal, ex sorry, I can't see my slides. Uh, there's barely any exertion when it's just no, just a bad sensation of movement, all right? A moderate exertion is when you feel there's a stronger sensation of movement. There's heart, which is a level five, and you start sweating, and extremely hard when you have heavy sweating and you can't talk, yeah? Next slide, please. Now, how, next slide, I think, yeah, okay. So how do you take your heart rate, okay? You can check your pulse at your neck, your wrist, or your chest. We recommend the wrist. So you can feel the radial pulse on the artery, okay, the same line as your thumb. Thumb. Now you place the tips of your index and your middle finger over the artery, and you just press lightly. Do not use your thumb, okay? Now take a full 60-second count of the heartbeats or take for 30 seconds and then multiply by two. Now start the count on a beat which is counted as zero, okay? Uh, you should take it before you start your walk, during your walk, and when you're resting. Now we live in a, uh, next slide please. Now, we do live in a COVID era where uh, we are all about social distancing. Uh, many people would complain that, uh, you know, we're all in the house, we can't go out, we can't exercise. Uh, it's a pretty much common complaint I hear among my patients in my clinic. Uh, well, there's always things you can, that you can do while you're, socially while you're trying to practice social distancing, okay? Now, engage in active family playtime. Any game that gets everyone up and moving truly counts, yeah? Catch up on household chores, such as cleaning out of the closet. Vacuuming is also a physical activity. Try to get outside as much as you can. Mow the grass, go for a walk, or take a bike ride. Remember always to maintain a safe distance between yourself and your other active neighbors. Now, while if you're happily watching television at home, uh, make television watching more active by doing jumping jacks or push-ups during the commercials. Next slide, please. Okay, so visit your doctor. Uh, before you begin any new exercise plan, talk to your doctor about the best way to incorporate cardiovascular activity into your lifestyle or even um, 
any moderate intensity uh, exercise. Not only can your doctor help establish a plan that safely and gradually will increase your capacity for cardiovascular exercise, right? Before you do, you really want to establish the baselines for your blood pressure, resting heart rate, and cholesterol that will allow you to track your success. Now, if you do have a medical condition, if you are overweight, if you are aged over 40 years, and if you haven't exercised regularly in a long time, see your doctor for a medical checkup before starting any new exercise program. Next slide, please. For maximum health benefits, my dear friends, the goal is to work hard, but not to work too hard. All right. What does work hard mean? We describe it as moderate intensity. And this is pretty much advocated by many big countries, many big uh, uh, agents and agencies. And the Australia, Australia's physical activity and sedentary behavior, behavior guidelines pretty much advocates uh, moderate intensity, 150 minutes a week. And brisk walking is counted. Next slide, please. Um, I would like to, to thank everyone who joined this session. Uh, basically, please let's start getting moving. Brisk walk, use the staircase at your work, even if it's using down, do downwards or upwards, doesn't matter. Hop three times now, try to do jump starts, YouTube, chicken dance, anything that you can, just start moving, yeah? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anam, for your very educational sharing. Uh, okay, maybe just as a, you know, someone who is approaching uh, a certain age, I won't reveal my age, a certain age, I'm also quite worried of my heart. So I was uh, wondering, how soon do we need to really, you know, take this seriously? Is it too? Uh, is there such thing as too early or too late? Um, I don't think there's never too early. I think even uh, we're okay. You're talking about checking your heart, or we're talking about staying active. Staying active, no age, any age, children, teenagers, everyone should be active, right? Uh, I'm forty plus, and the exercise that I do is just basically brisk walking. <laughs> I can't run, yeah. Uh, as to checking your heart, right? In the European countries. Anyone above 30 years old is advocated to check their heart. In our population, I think 40 and above. I mean, if you can start at the young age of 30, that would be good. But at least at the age of 40, one should start checking their heart out. And when you say you're checking your heart, you know, it's just not like checking your heart, but it's checking everything else, like, you know, blood pressure, your diabetes, con diabetes control, your cholesterol control, and having a chat with your doctor who could actually advocate a good lifestyle. Okay, uh, what, what about for teenagers? Do they need to worry a lot or they can just live uh, without any worries for now? I think as for teenagers, now we're talking about, okay, so teenagers, right? If they have no symptoms, if they are extremely healthy, if they have no family history of certain cardiac conditions, I don't think they have to worry. Okay, but if they do have certain symptoms, like if suddenly they feel shortness of breath, they feel palpitations, they have chest pain, they should get their heart checked for many reasons. Uh, you see, when you talk about heart disease, you're not only talking about coronary artery disease. Okay, we have congenital heart conditions as well. So it's always good to visit your doctor because you might pick up a heart condition that has been gone unnoticed that when you were born. Yeah. So every time you feel unwell, I think you, you feel chest pain, you have difficulties breathing, you just feel, you know, it doesn't feel right. I, I think it's worthwhile visiting your doctor. Right. If you're healthy, if you're a healthy teenager, then I mean, don't go and come. I mean, there's probably no need to come and check your oh, for a routine check. But of course, I mean, there is a disclaimer, right? If you have a family history of like familial hyperlipidemia, if you have a family history of hokum, you, you know, in those kind of conditions, then you want to start screening at a much younger age to monitor them as they grow older. I hope my okay. answer is clear. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, okay. Dr. Anam, looks like we have a question from a viewer. Sure. I hope I can answer the question. Okay. Uh, Poovan Shanmugan asks, Hi, doctor. Can intense workout cause a heart attack? Uh, okay, tough question. Okay, I mean, I'm assuming these are tough. I mean, these are people who have exercised. They've started with gradual intensity, okay? And uh, they have gone going to intense workout, right? Typically, it reduces the risk of heart attack, right? But we've always heard of conditions where people suddenly drop dead while they're doing intense workout. Now, so they might have had some other condition. It might not be a heart attack. So when you talk about heart attack, right, you're talking about where your coronaries are plugged and there's no blood flow, 
right? They could have had a sudden cardiac death for many other reasons. Yeah, they could have had an abnormal uh, arrhythmia, a heart, you know, electricity issue that could have caused them to suddenly drop dead. If I, if you know, if I might just correct that uh, misconception of uh, heart attacks and uh, intense workout. Yeah, so they might have suddenly, they might have just had a sudden cardiac death, but not necessarily because of a heart attack. It could have been an arrhythmic issue. Okay, arrhythmia issues for basically, your yeah. Arrhythmia issues are basically issues with your with your with your electricity, your conduction pathway in your heart, with abnormal heart rhythms. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Puvan, for your question. I hope that answers your question. So, uh, Dr. Anam, just now you mentioned that you are also quite adverse to running. So myself, <laughs> I... I'm also my favorite exercise before I was sleeping. <laughs> so yeah, but now I've started. I've started brisk walking, and it's a, you know after some time it actually feels really good. Yeah, um, do something that you enjoy. You know, grab friends to walk with you, your family members to walk with you. Uh, brisk walk, um, and as a matter of fact, if you can talk while you walk, then perhaps you need to walk harder. <laughs> right? Do do anything that you enjoy. Like, you know, with your, with your family, you can't go out right now. Uh, I can share with you a link, you know, like where they share all the different kind of exercises that you can do at home. Like, just go to YouTube, click in. You know, even chicken dance is good. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's some form of exercise, yeah? Just keep moving. And just don't, don't stay in a place and not do anything. Right, uh, so, remember, Dr. Adam. Uh, okay, yes. we have another yeah. question. We have another question from Facebook. Okay, this question comes from Siva Kumar Kanya. Uh, he says, nowadays when I do exercise and feel my heart burning or very tired, do I need to stop the exercise immediately? I think uh, to Mr. Siva Kumar, you're 44. Uh, I think you need to come and visit a cardiologist. <laughs> I think it's better get it. I, I, I think it's best that uh, uh, I, I think it's best that you visit a cardiologist. If you're having heartburn, discomfort when you're exercising that might be an angina symptom. I can't say much, but all I can advise you is please go and visit your favorite cardiologist, right? Please, please get it checked, yeah. Okay, thank you, Siva Kumar, for your question. So, uh, Dr. Anam, I was mentioning just now, uh, I actually have a very serious condition where I'm actually allergic to exercising. So, <laughs> I, I want to ask, is there maybe an alternative, like a diet I can follow for my, to, to you know, See, keep my he heart healthy? Okay, so basically, let's go. Diet aside, you still need to find an exercise that you like. We need to, uh, we need to uh, desensitize you to some form of exercise. You don't like, you don't have to run, but you can always do something else. You can dance, right? You can swim. Uh, diet, you know, it's not like if you have a healthy diet, you shouldn't exercise. Or if you're exercising, it gives you the permission to eat anything that you want under the sun. It doesn't work like that, right? I, I think everything should be done in moderation. You know, enjoy your food in moderation, all right? Eat healthy. Uh, that was going to be another talk to him about a <laughs> healthy diet. Uh, yeah, you know, low cholesterol, you know, or keep it high in, a, uh, high in like, you know, good cholesterol. There's just so many advice on that, you know. Eat healthy, reduce less oily food, less fried food, less carbohydrate, reduce your rice amount, increase your protein intake, increase your vegetable intake. It's not going to be easy, but it's it's a lifestyle change. It's a practice. And once you've done it, it's difficult to go back. Right? But my dear Tim, you, we, we still need to get you working. We need to get you moving. It's just not diet alone, yeah? Oh, because this uh, is a medical condition, you know, self-prescribed uh, condition. <laughs> I'll refer you to my in-house uh, allergist <laughs> who can probably find you. No, no, okay. you know, it's baby. Tim, Tim, it's it's baby steps, Tim. It's really baby steps. Start small. Right. You will eventually right. enjoy. Do it. Do it sometime of the day, like you know, even the night if it's cool. The daytime, you enjoy sunrise. And do it. Do it, find something that you like. You like walking in a certain area. You know, uh, grab your your. Grab your friend, go for a walk, you know, just, just do something. You, you really have to. You just have to. You have to start small. Tell me, when, when you're working, I mean, like, I mean, now with, with COVID, many people work, work at home. Uh, but, you know, at your working place, if you have the staircase, lunch hour, just go, you know, just try using the stairs up and down. You know, it just takes 10 minutes. Put your earplugs on, listen to music, and uh, baby steps, not easy, but I'm sure it can be done. If I can do it, <laughs> anyone else can do it, really. 
Okay, okay. Maybe next year's uh, New Year's resolution then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Better late than never. <laughs> it'll be yeah, good if you yeah. can do it today. It'll be, it'll be good if you can do it today though. Oh, oh, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Okay. Okay, Dr. Anam, uh, looks like we have another question from our viewers. Sure. Okay, we have a question from Sui Leng. She asks, uh, what ethnicity is at greater risk for heart disease? And currently in Malaysia, it's Indians. I, I don't have it in my slide here. If I open my another slide, I can't share it with you because I have to send it to Fatin. So it, it's, it's among the Indians. Is there a particular reason why? Um, I think it's number one, uh, I think it might be our diet, but it's also genetically that we are probably more inclined to get it. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so thank you, Suling, for your question. Uh, diet, one more thing, how, uh, life, sorry, diet, lifestyle, genetic predisposition. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Anam, so during this COVID uh, pandemic, I believe a lot of us are under a lot of stress. Yeah. So, so it doesn't matter what, where the stress comes from. So I was it wondering, is. Is, is stress affects the heart, the health of it our does. heart as well? It does. It, it does. does. You know, if you're, if you're stressed out, like, you know, your, your cholesterols go up, you know, your, yeah, it, it affects. It's a, it's a, how would I put it? It's a, it's, it, it's a cascade effect. When, and when you're stressed, your immunity is down, your inflammation is higher, and your inflammation also plays an important role in coronary artery disease, inflammatory mark, yeah. Inflammation, yeah. Okay, looks like we have another question from Facebook. Uh, this question comes from uh, Siva Kumar again. <laughs> so it looks like he's quite worried for his heart. I, I, I don't think there's a best vitamin for heart diseases in, in all fairness, yeah. I think, I think, you know, if you're looking at heart disease, basically you're looking at the patient themselves. They're looking at your family history. Are you a smoker? What's your alcohol intake like? Are you diabetic? Are you hypertension? What is your cholesterol level? What is your body size? Are you obese? These are the things that we really need to look into. Yeah. So there's no cure-all medicine for, for, for this condition, right? You to, it, so when you say condition, it's, it's a very generic term. It really depends what condition you're talking about. Yeah. I, I don't want to say the wrong thing because I, I don't want to give a blanket statement because then people would misunderstand the whole thing. So Siva, you probably need to consult uh, Dr. Anam after this for well, further <laughs> consultation. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, looks like we have another question uh, from Ho Yan Lee. She asked, uh, are there any suitable exercises to improve the sleeping quality? Okay, so ho, ho Yan Li. So you can actually Google up something called sleep hygiene, okay? Uh, so typically when people, uh, I, I have this benefit because I did psychiatry for a year. Uh, so usually when patients have sleeping difficulties, we, we tell them to uh, have a hot cup of milk before they go to sleep. Uh, four hours before they actually, before hours before their sleeping time, we actually ask them to do, ex we ask them to exercise, yeah? So in all honesty, any form of exercise will improve your sleep quality immensely right even brisk walking makes you feel sleep much better and tim is going to update facebook once he starts doing it yeah i can't hear you tim you're muted ah sorry uh, dr enam so sleeping is actually important for the health of your heart Everything is important for your health, for your heart, your diet, a good night's sleep. You know, if you don't sleep well, the next day you're tired, you're stressed. It, it's a vicious cycle, Tim, everything. And uh, many a times I have patients coming to me and they will say, oh, we didn't sleep, so our BP is high. Like, you know, and when they sleep better, their BP is much lower. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm unsure about sleep quality and blood pressure in all fairness, but... Uh, Many patients uh, have told me that, but I do, I, I do really feel that it's not feel it's, it's, it's a truth that, you know, better sleep quality gives you a better health. Okay. Uh, wow. I think a lot of people are quite worried for their heart, heart health. Uh, we have another question from Ui Liang Daniel. So he asked, can you recommend oh, a yeah. basic supplement? I cannot. I cannot recommend. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think I think the supplement that you should start doing is walking or brisk walking. I mean, I, I really can't suggest a supplement. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I think without knowing no, the not, medical background, it will be hard. 
No, but you see, as I supplements are supplements, you're still losing the core. The core business is keeping staying healthy is by having a healthy diet, having a healthy lifestyle, healthy lifestyle ensures a healthy sleep. It's it's as I said, it's it's a very uh, how would I put it? It's a very symbiotic relationship. Supplements are just being supplements. You know, they supplement, but they're not the core business at all, right? And uh, and I I'm so sorry I I can't take, I, I I don't have an answer for that. Okay, so Daniel, so you heard Doctor Anna mention, uh, you need to apply everything. There's no one supplement that can help you. you need to exercise. You need to keep yourself healthy, healthy diet. Yeah. Okay, okay. So we have another question from Siu Ken Ma. So she asked many. Many times we heard of people who suddenly collapse and pass away due to heart attack. Some sure. without prior okay. conditions. Yeah. Okay. So people with heart attack or chest pains present with many ways, okay? And unfortunately, one of the ways they present is actually they just suddenly die. They just drop it, right? And that is why you were asking at what age should we start checking for heart conditions? So there's various heart conditions, but what many people are really interested in is whether do they have a coronary, do they have coronary artery disease? Right. And that's when you go and visit your doctor and they will check simple things like simple things, blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol. And then if you're really far more worried, then you go and get like your, you know, if you walk into clinicals, they give you an executive test, you get like a stress test done. Yeah. These are little, little things that you do to pick up whether do you actually have coronary artery disease or not. Because many a times patients go unnoticed before it's too late. Yeah. So, yes, it is true. Patients do present with heart attacks. They have never had any symptoms and all of a sudden they just collapse in front of you. Okay, uh, looks like we have uh, another question. Wow, the questions are coming in hot. Okay, what causes uh, palpitations? Okay, okay, Mr. Carl, um, I, I can tell you there's many causes of palpitations. If you're anemic, you can have palpitations. If you inherently have a cardiac uh, uh, a, a rhythm problem, you can have palpitations. Uh, a lot of thyroid function abnormalities can cause palpitations. So when you have palpitations, visit your doctor. They'll get an ECG done. They'll get all your blood tests done, and they will sort you out in a timely, in a in a in a in a proper fashion. Yeah, there's a set of things that they will have to do. Okay, Many so Dr. Enam, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there an effective way of you know, monitoring your heart health at home without going to the clinic or consulting a doctor? Is there any way? Uh, I think simple thing, if you're actually starting to walk and you don't feel any... I mean, well, that's a tough question, uh, Tim. You've put me in a very difficult position. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. No, I, 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 I think um, just to check in at home, probably not, love. So there's no test we can administer on ourselves uh, to see whether our heart is still okay or not? No. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, okay. So, no, 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 no. so uh, meaning that if we feel anything not right with our heart, we should if, immediately if run one, to the I'm ER. Sure if, if there is one, all the cardiologists will be out of job. <laughs> <laughs> so no, this might be a... Uh, okay, unfortunately, okay. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there really isn't one, yeah? I mean, you can always check stuff at home, like your own blood pressure at home. You can check your heart rate at home. But, you know, the blood tests and all, you still have to walk into a hospital, right? Like if you want to do a stress test, you still have to come into the hospital. You know? and, uh, and now you have uh, Dr. Google. Everyone is reading up a lot. Um, so, I mean, that can be beneficial at times, but it can also be really erroneous. People tend you, you might read the wrong thing. So it's always best to get uh, professional advice. Yeah. Okay, looks like our good friend Siva has another question. Yes, yes. drinking tea and coffee. Drinking tea. Oh, well, it depends, right? Now, are you taking tea and coffee just plain or is it with sugar? Like, you know, if it's full of sugar, then obviously it's not good. And then some people inherently have palpitation problems and these kind of drinks can actually just aggravate that. Yeah. So I think Dr. Anna mentioned earlier, so in moderation, right? In moderation. Everything, Everything should be in done moderation. in moderation. Yeah. yeah. So I shouldn't exercise too much as well, right, Dr. Enam? No need. Moderate, 150 minutes a week. Moderate intensity. That's the way to go. Okay, okay. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, Dr. Enam, uh, maybe can you uh, uh, tell us, uh, is there any... Tim, can't hear is there... you. Yeah. Sorry, Dr. Enam. Uh, I was wondering, is there any way to help a heart attack patient when he has an attack? Is there any way uh... someone can help? I think, uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, you can help in many ways, like, you know, calling an ER immediately, you know, uh, CPR, basic, basic, uh, basic CPR, like just checking whether if they're still breathing, checking whether if they have a pulse, if they don't have, then commend CPR. If you're in a shopping mall, just shout out for help. Do they have an AED in place? Little, little things like that can help until more definitive care has arrived, right? And I think everyone should ideally know CPR. I think we should really advocate that to people to learn CPR. Yeah. So, Dr. Enam, I actually heard from the internet, but it could be wrong. They say if, you're, if you think you're suffering from a heart attack, you should cough really loudly. D does that make sense? Is there such, something no, it like does. that? No, it doesn't make sense. doesn't make sense. But have you heard of yeah. this before? No, never. They, they, first time. Oh, never. Because <laughs> I, I heard this quite often. They say when you feel your heart is, you know, over over stress or something you should cough loudly Not that to I know circulate of. the blood better i don't think so but you i'm happy okay, you okay. should share, share, share the link with me and let me tell you whether it's reliable or not okay so it's probably a myth i guess it's probably a myth i think it's a myth i yeah it's yeah 100 myth yeah <laughs> okay uh okay so we have uh, another question from Puven. Yes, proven. So he asks, can a super active lifestyle undo unhealthy eating habits? Hee <laughs> hee. <laughs> no. <laughs> Probably not. Everything in moderation, right? Yeah. That's the way to go in life. So I don't think you should describe he, exactly what is unhealthy, what is exactly unhealthy eating habits. Like a steak every day or like like I, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe this one I'm quite right. expert. Maybe maybe snack food 24-7. I have uh, oh, no snacks good, beside uh. me. No good. Oh, no good. No, see, snack food, uh, it depends what kind of snacks you're doing. Are you doing healthy snacks? Are you doing like chips that are salty? Salty will increase your pressure. Pressure will cause a heart attack. Puhao, no good. I mean, good snacks are supposed to be unhealthy, right? <laughs> what is good snack? Good snack should be, oh, tasty the snacks. The yummy one. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. The yummy you ones. Know, so remember you were asking, is there any age for this? I think you want to start young. Right, you want to start young, having a healthy lifestyle, healthy diet. Yeah. You right. can treat uh, yourself once in a you can treat yourself once in a while, but if it's your daily food, then I think that you're going to run into trouble. Doctor Enam, can you define once in a while? What is a while? Oh, is... I cannot. I'm going to get into trouble for saying this. <laughs> So by, by my definition, once in a while could be like, you know, instead of every hour, maybe two hour once. No, no, no. I, I, can't, so the, I think that this kind of advice is more personal because I don't think uh, this is uh, any reply that I'm going to give does not represent the medical community at large. Yeah. Um, that's why I'm not taking the question because no doctors okay. there will dare commit themselves to say, <laughs> uh, oh, you're allowed once a week, once a month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, understandable, understandable. Yeah, okay, yeah. so our good friend Siva is back. So, so yeah, doctor. doctor. One of my friends mentioned, you suddenly have a heart attack, can give the blood thinning to... I mean, the thing is, how, how do you know the patient had a heart attack? That's my question. Right? Uh, I mean, if you're quite convinced that you have chest pain and all of that, uh, uh, wow. Uh, that's a tough one to answer, Siva. Like, you know, when you exactly say heart pain, chest, heart attack, it might not necessarily be called a, heart, a coronary artery disease. A chest pain can mean so many things. It can also mean dissection of aorta, you know, where there's a tear in the aorta. And if you end up giving blood dilutors to those group of patients, you might make things worse. Yeah. So I think it's best perhaps, like, I mean, unless, of course, you know, I, I think it's very, I, I think this is something, honestly, you really need to wait for medical uh, uh, someone, medical, a medical profession to come. Because I think um, when the ED people come, they can, uh, when you have the ambulance team come, they, they, some of them actually do like uh, an ECG and then they can tell you whether they need, you need to take some medications. But I would honestly not advocate you take tablets on your own. 
Because I said, chest pain doesn't necessarily translate to a heart attack. Yeah. Even though you might say majority, majority of the time it is, but it truly doesn't translate to one having a heart attack. Chest pain could suddenly just mean someone had developed a pneumothorax, like air trapped in the lung, right? It's very, very difficult to give. Uh, it's extremely dangerous when you, you advocate that, such blanket statements like that. Or it could be due to heartburn, especially. It could be that. Oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Tim. <laughs> oh, personal, personal testimony. Experience. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Uh, we uh maybe we'll wait uh, one or two more minutes to see if there any new com uh, new comments from Facebook. Sure. So Dr. Enam, uh maybe uh just curious, how long have you been in this uh profession? Uh, as a doctor or as a cardiologist? As a I mean, cardiologist. Like, uh so I uh I've been okay, so I graduated year 2005, started my cardiology training in 2014, came back from Canada with my subspecialty training at the end of 2018. Um, I was in Surdang and then I moved to Alostar and now I'm a consultant in clinicals. I see. Uh, Dr. Enamala. So cardiology, yeah. Yeah. Go on, Dr. Enamala. No, no, please tell me. Yeah. Oh, because uh, I was quite curious uh, looking at your job title. It mentions here, okay, the first part, consultant cardiologist, I think most of us understand. But what yeah. about the second and third part, the okay, interventional so, cardiologists? So interventional cardiologists are people who do like angiograms and angioplasty. They invade when you have a heart attack and then we put a little tube into your heart and we take out the blood clot, we put a stent in, yeah? And then a structural interventionist is something, um, it's relatively new in this country, uh, but a much more matured field abroad. So I was trained in Canada for that. Uh, so basically, so our heart is a chamber. The chamber has got four different valves, right? Between every, uh, uh, four rooms. Between every room, there's a, a valve, right? So can you imagine is your heart as a generator that permits blood to move in one direction? And how that happens, you have a heart valve. The valve is like your door. The door makes sure that the blood moves in one direction. All right. So let's say if the valve is abnormal, all right, they can either get too tight or they get too leaky. Previously, you have to go for an open heart surgery. Now you can do it through a, a through a, through a procedure that's done through the groin. So that's what structural interventionists do. That's what the structural interventional doctors do. Okay. And then if you're born, Gooch is grown up congenital heart. So let's say if you're born with a hole in the heart, you don't have to go for a surgery. You can actually do these procedures uh, through a percutaneous method. So that's my area of my subspeciality. Right? Let's see. So uh, what about the, the GUCH part? The so GUCH is grown up congenital heart disease. So remember the ah. asking how about these young patients who have pain, yeah, yeah, palpitations. Yeah. yeah. So they're probably they have an abnormality that they're born with that has probably just gone unnoticed. And uh, you have, and then of course you also have uh, kids who are being operated at very much younger age. And then as they grow older, they can have uh, issues with certain valves and all that. Um, that's what I was trained for when I was in Canada. Yeah. So a okay, structural okay. problem with the heart, not the coronary problem. I see, I see. Okay. Uh, so it looks like uh, we don't have any more questions and time is nearly up. So uh, we'd like to thank all the viewers for joining in today, especially our loyal viewer, uh, Mr. Siva. So we hope. Uh, well, thank, thank you, you uh, Siva. Uh, uh, thank you, Siva. Thank you, Siva. If any other questions you have, you can always contact any one of us in clinicals or you can just contact my clinic as well. Happy to take your questions. Yeah. So we hope, Siva, you will, uh, after hearing today's talk, you'll be more uh, sensitive to all this. No, no. But, but the fact that you're having like heartburn symptoms after exercise, I, I really think you should get yourself checked. I think a visit to a cardiologist is warranted. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I guess that's all the time we have for today. So, Dr. Enam, thank you so much again once uh, for spending your time with us this morning. We thank you for your sharing and hope you and your colleagues at the Glen Eagle Hospital Penang will continue to stay safe and healthy always. Thank you. Thank you, team. Thank you, team. Thank you, Fatin. Thank you, Poovan, Hazel, and the whole group behind this. Yeah, thanks for having me on board. Okay, thanks, Dr. Enam. Okay, uh, that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank everyone for being with us since uh, 
10 a.m. this morning. So before I go, I'd like to remind everyone, for those who have uh, liked, share, and comment for this live session, you will stand a chance to win a ticket for to uh, Penang's 3D Art Museum. So I'd like to wish everyone a uh, happy morning and continue to stay safe and stay healthy always. Goodbye and thank you.